T-G-I-F. That stands for Tall Green Indigenous Frogs. Huh, my producer is telling me that it also apparently stands for Thank God It's Friday. Huh. Learn something new every day. I'm your host, Andrew, and this is Crypto Espresso, your teeny tiny daily shot of caffeinated crypto headlines, and we're action rolling into the news. First up, the world's largest investment firm, BlackRock, has applied for a spot Bitcoin ETF in the U.S., which would be a first of its kind if approved by the SEC. The iShares Bitcoin Trust would allow investors to access the Bitcoin market without the complexities and operational burdens of direct ownership. The fund would use Coinbase Custody Trust Company as its Bitcoin custodian and Bank of New York Mellon as its fiat custodian. The Spot Bitcoin ETF would track the CF Benchmarks Index, which updates the Bitcoin price at least every 15 seconds during regular trading hours. BlackRock, with more than $9 trillion in assets under management, argues that the Spot Bitcoin market does not need to be regulated for the SEC to approve its proposal, as the regulator has previously replied on the underlying futures market for approving commodity-based trust shares. BlackRock joins a long list of Spot Bitcoin ETF applicants in the U.S., though none have been approved so far. Grayscale, Fidelity, and Van Eck are among those who have faced rejection or delays from the SEC. Coinbase is partnering with Block's BitKey wallet to make self-custody of Bitcoin more accessible and user-friendly. BitKey, a self-custody Bitcoin wallet, is currently in its global beta phase and is set to have a wider public launch later this year. Beta testers of the BitKey wallet have access to the mobile app and receive a hardware device with advanced security features like a fingerprint sensor, pin authentication, and mobile recovery. With this partnership, BitKey wallet holders will be able to purchase Bitcoin on Coinbase and easily transfer it to their non-custodial wallet. Additionally, existing Bitcoin holdings can easily be transferred. BitKey's app will display the full transaction cost offered by different partners, allowing customers to choose the most suitable option before being redirected to a partner-hosted experience. The BitKey wallet has also announced a partnership with Cash App, a product of Block, formerly Square, which integrates with the BitKey app. The Texas State Securities Board has issued an emergency cease and desist order against crypto lender Abra and its founder, William Barheit, alleging securities fraud and insolvency since at least March 31st of 2023. The regulator accused Abra and Barheit of misleading the public through investment offerings in Abra Earn and Abra Boost that contained materially misleading statements. The filing also stated that Abra Trade and Plutus Landing have been secretly transferring assets to Binance, and as of February 2023, they had assets valued at nearly $119 million on Binance.com. Abra has been in operation for nearly 10 years and had previously announced plans to launch a state-chartered bank in 2023. Abra and its associated entities are still permitted to allow customers to withdraw funds while awaiting a scheduled hearing on the matter. The regulator also revealed that Abra had substantial amounts of funds with various companies, including $30 million with Babel Finance, $8.8 million with Oros Tech Limited, $30 million with Genesis, and $10 million with Three Arrows Capital. However, each of these companies is undergoing liquidation or bankruptcy processes. The filing highlighted an interview with Barheit in which he did not contest the conclusion of Abra's insolvency. Despite this, Plutus Financial Holdings Inc. or its affiliate or subsidiary claimed on social media that Abra is not bankrupt and continues to operate normally, contradicting the regulatory findings. A digital art collection that belonged to a defunct crypto hedge fund has been sold by Sotheby's for millions of dollars. The collection, which was assembled by Three Arrows Capital in 2021, featured some of the most rare and coveted NFTs in the crypto space. One of the highlights of the auction was The Goose, a digital artwork by Dmitry Cherniak that depicts a golden goose laying eggs. The piece was bought by Three Arrows Capital for 1800 ETH in August of 2021, which was worth about $5.8 million at the time. Sotheby's sold it for approximately $5.4 million plus fees, totaling more than $6.2 million. Other NFTs that were part of the collection included three CryptoPunks and one Autoglyph from Larva Labs, which are among the first and most iconic NFT projects on the Ethereum blockchain. The CryptoPunks sold for between $75,000 and $90,000 each, while the Autoglyph fetched $120,000. The auction was part of the liquidation process of 3AC, which collapsed amid the 2022 market crash. The hedge fund was known for being crypto-friendly and investing in various digital assets and projects. However, after the crash, its co-founders disappeared from the public eye and faced legal troubles from creditors and regulators. And finally, Do Kwan, co-founder of Terraform Labs, will be taken into extradition custody in Montenegro for up to six months. 
The court will decide whether to extradite him to South Korea, where he's wanted for his involvement in a massive crypto fraud case. The U.S. has also requested his extradition on various charges, including securities fraud and market manipulation. Kwan and his former CFO, Hong Chung Jun, were arrested in March at the Podgorica airport where they allegedly tried to fly to Dubai with fake travel documents. They had been living in Serbia after the Terra ecosystem collapsed in May 2022, causing losses of up to $40 billion. They are scheduled to face trial in Montenegro on June 16th for falsifying documents. Kwan is also under investigation by the Special State Prosecutor's Office for his alleged connections to a local politician, Miloko Spadzic. Kwan claimed to have contacted Spadzic, the leader of the Europe Now Party, in a letter he sent to several officials before the recent elections in Montenegro. Spadzic denied any ties to Kwan, but their possible relationship and financial transactions were widely reported by the media. And here's something that I'm willing to report. No blurred faces, no redacted sources. I want all of you to know that I want you to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click on that little bell icon to get buzzed whenever a new Crypto Espresso video goes live. Thoughts on today's episode? Well, just drop me a line in that comment section below because I read those comments and they keep me up at night. Questions about our headlines or crypto in general? Take that plunge and ask Alex in the description below. Alex is always a great resource for all things Web3 and the metaverse, and that about does it for today. As always, I've been your host, Andrew. These have been your headlines, and ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. See you Monday.